Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course, Industrial and the Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Now, uh, today uh, in this lecture, I am uh, going to cover a new topic that is the mobilization of enzymes. In the last couple of lectures, I try to uh, concentrate on enzymes and uh, we, we discussed the theoretical part of uh, enzymes that uh, what is the enzyme and uh, how you can determine the activity of the enzymes, then uh, what, then uh, how substrate enzyme interaction take place, and uh, and also uh, how you can find out the volume of the reactor for getting a desired amount of substrate, and also we also discuss about the enzymatic inhibition. Now, immobilization enzyme has a lot of industrial applications actually because, because we know that a major drawback of this uh, enzyme is the stability of the enzyme because we cannot, uh, because the enzyme cannot be stable for longer period of time. The immobilization is the one of the techniques through which we can improve the stability of the enzyme to, for a uh, longer period of time. And not only that because when you talk about any kind of enzymatic reaction, after the reaction is over, the enzymes remain as the impurities in the reaction mixture. So, after the reaction is over, you have to remove the enzyme from the reaction mixture. So, that is another problem that we have and that is why that uh, when you use the immobilized enzyme, so you do not have uh, the, that uh, 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 enzyme in the product, much of the enzyme that is not present in the product. So, your purification problem that will be little bit easier and uh, and not only that that you can use the enzyme for longer period of time because in case of you know, normal en enzymatic reaction after the reaction is over you have to the enzyme cannot be reused again but in case of immobilized enzyme you can reuse the enzyme again and again until is the activity declines so uh, the, this uh, lecture will be uh, will be will be deals with particular the, this immobilized enzyme uh, process. And uh, first thing that I want to highlight: what do you mean by immobilization? Immobilization defines as the process of confining process of confining of cells or enzyme in a solid support. What do you mean by that? Suppose this is a solid support, am I right? And your enzyme that is uh, I, that immobilized. So, uh, when, when suppose this is a solution and uh, the enzymes are there in the solution. So, they are freely moving, am I right? But when it is fixed on a solid matrix, their movement is arrested. They are not moving, they, they, they cannot move. So, the advantage is that so, suppose you have a column here, you have a small column you and you immobilize the enzyme, you can pass your substrate here and you can get your product in other end. But here, when you pass your substrate and get the, the product, the, with the product you will get the enzyme also. So, the here you will not get much of enzyme. So, the basically that immobilization defines as the you are fixing the enzyme on a solid matrix and movement of the space is restricted that is that is the major thing that we have and the support or matrix on which the enzymes are immobilized allows the exchange of media containing the substrate and effector and inhibitor molecule so what i want to tell that uh, suppose your your enzyme is immobilized here and your substrate is here in the bulk so this is to be diffuse here and then and only then your reaction will take place and after the product form, the product will, will come to the bulk. So, this is this is the process that will take place in case of immobilized system. Immobilized enhances the stability of the enzyme. I already discussed this increases the stability of the enzyme. 
The advantage of the immobilized system that first is the stability increases that already we pointed out can be reused again and again that also I pointed out. So, uh, suppose in a big column, so uh, that uh, you you this uh, you can put your uh, immobilized enzyme here, and here you pass. Suppose you want to produce glucose, uh, glucose to fructose, the glucose in uh, glucose isomerase enzyme, glucose isomerase. So if we immobilize that, immobilize the glucose isomerase here. He will get the fructose. So, so you know that uh, this you can you can operate it continuously, and until unless your 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 reaction declines, okay, and uh, products are free from enzymes and can be used continuous product formation suitable for industrial and medical use. How it is medically used? Because we know that uh, uh, due to some genetic disorder that sometimes uh, some uh, some of us are unable to uh, produce some kind of desired enzyme. So, that enzyme we, we shall have to take from outside for our survival. Now, if you take the enzymes in the uh, 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 in the form of uh, tablets, then uh, then uh, you have to do take it lot of lot, you have to take lot of tablets. Now, in, the, in suppose uh, some enzymes uh, uh, if you if you keep it immobilized and put it in the bloodstream, so you can use that enzyme that for a longer period of time. You don't have to take the enzyme again and again. So this is one of the important application in the we have in the medi medical uh, medical uh, uh, um, sector, medicinal sector, and uh, the minimize the is uh, the effluent disposal problem since. It doesn't have in the your enzyme in the product, so your disposal problem also will be reduced. Now, <coughs> application of immobilized system that examples, if you look at the industrial application, we have antibiotics, beverage, and the and the amino acid. Because I can I can give a very typical example that you know chill proof beer. I don't know whether you have heard that chill proof beer. What do you mean by chill proof beer? The beer is usually uh, usually served under chill condition, and we know the beer is kind of beverage that uh, that contains lot of proteins. Now, since when it served at low temperature, there is every possibility that if there is a protein, bigger molecular protein, it may precipitate it out. Now, if it precipitated out, it will give some kind of hazy in the in the solution that is undesirable. So, uh, this is uh, in the, the lot of application, this is one of the application that we have in the beverage industry. Then medicinal application I told you uh, treatment and uh, diagnosis. The diagnosis uh, means uh, that you know that uh, suppose uh, particularly uh, during the uh, athletics uh, competition that you know if you, if you want to find out that uh, whether the athlete they have taken any kind of stimulant and uh, so we can have a sensor that you know biosensor if we have we can form the biosensor we can easily detect that whether they have taken any kind of stimulant drug delivery system this can be used food industry it is used for the production of high fructose corn syrup this is mostly used in the confectionery industry and waste treatment process and uh, sewage and industrial particularly trickling filter or uh, that is largely used uh, in the industry that uh, for the removal of the soluble organics present in the in, in the in the waste water now type oxidase the breaches the white in mm, in the white bridge the bread and bar oxidase the paper manufacturing industry Hydrolase, we have alpha beta amylase that is used in brewing industry, cellulose, wine making, and the glucoamylase, the starch processing, penicillin amidase that is the antibiotics industry, keratinase, leather ma manufacturing industry, lias, uh, fumarate hydro hydratase that the malic acid and isomerase, glucose isomerase for fructose syrup production. 
these are the different industrial applications we have. Now, as I pointed out that uh, one important application that we have is the biosensor. Now, question come how biosensor they are produced. Now, here in this, uh, in this uh, picture, you will find that uh, the two part is there. One is, uh, this is uh, bioreceptor and this we call molecular recognition unit and this is called transducer because so you know it has it divided into two different parts one is uh, uh, molecular recognition unit another is transducer the molecular recognition unit that main part was they recognize the molecule as for example suppose the glucose oxidase we have now glucose oxidase in presence of glucose they will immediately they will react and produce a degrade to gluconolactone so you know that you know that reaction is there you know that and that reaction that chemical chain we can convert it to the electri electrical signal that is with the help of transducer and this is mostly this may be of different types the so mostly uh, uh, we have two, two two different types one is potassium potentiometric and another is amperometric metric the potentiometric means with the respect to change of voltage and amperometric means with change of current that we can easily find out what is the change that takes place because of water and that we correlate with the concentration. I can give a very simple example. Suppose this is micro volt and this is the concentration of substrate, maybe glucose that we have. So it is like this. So so uh, the major problem is that that after this concentration this attains the plateau that is the, that is the major major problem that means it is effective up to this concentration after this concentration is not effective so uh, so that is that is the major problem when we use as a biosensor your concentration of the sample concentration of the software should be as low as possible so if you if you if the concentration is high then you still have to dilute significantly to uh, to have this but uh, the advantage is that you can you can analyze n number of sample and instantaneously you can do that it will not take any time but if you go for any any analytical techniques you have to prepare the sample you have to add different chemicals then you have to put in the Spectrophotometer it takes a lot of time, but this is the major app with the frequency of analysis that increases drastically. So, so this is how it is done. This is the bioreceptor and this is transducer and this is how we can detect that you know that in a detector we can detect that uh, how much we correlate that uh, how much uh, that the first uh, you can you can you can see that. Uh, the here that is the engine that is the, the biomolecules they are immobilized on the cell. I can give the example that the enzymes are immobilized on the substrate and enzymes are very specific with respect to substrate when they react is converted into different compounds and when this reaction takes place it is converted into the electrical signal and this electrical signal we recorded in the our recorder. Now classification of solid matrix, the solid, the solid matrix that is used for uh, immobilization purpose because the different type of solid matrix we consider, one is natural polymer, then synthetic polymer, then inorganic, we have natural minerals and processed minerals. Now uh, what is the natural polymers? We have polysaccharides like cellulose, dextrin, agar, agarose, chitin and, and alginate. Protein we have collagen largely used, particularly I, uh, I work with IIT Delhi and we have we use the collagen membrane for the immobilization of uh, glucose isomerase enzyme, albumin and also uh, car that carbon. The synthetic polymer we have polystyrene and other polymer, polymer we have polyacrylate, polymethacrylate. Uh, the polyacrylamide, the polyamide and vinyl and allyl polymers. Natural minerals are bentonite and sil silica, then uh, processed minerals are glass, metal, control pore, metal oxide. So, th this is the different examples of the solid matrix. 
So when we, when we talk about any kind of solid carrier, it, broadly it can be divided into two types. One is called non-porous. One is called non-porous and this is porous. That means, you know, that uh, suppose that uh, this, uh, this is solid matrix, so it does not have any pore, but this is solid matrix uh, may be having this kind of pore. So, you know, that uh, this, is, this, is, this is how pores uh, inside the pore, that you know, that some pore is there inside the solid matrix. So, this is non-porous, this is porous. So, in porous also, this pore may be of two type, one is control pore and this is broad pores distribution. That means, when the pore size is uniform, suppose your pore size is uniform like this, then this is a control pore. So, that is obviously, that will be very costly and, and uh, broad pore distribution means pores the size are different. Some size is bigger, some size is smaller like this. Inside this solid matrix, we have that different size of uh, these pores. Now, non-porous, what is the ad advantage? The diffusion effect is minimal because, because it is very obvious because suppose here yeah, this is, this is uh, solid matrix and enzymes are immobilized on the surface. So, when, when your substrate is going, that we can freely interact with the enzymes. This is the enzyme. This freely interact with the enzymes. The diffusion effect is minimal and large substrate in solution can be reacted with the minor difficulties. Disadvantage the lower surface area because uh, since the surface is smooth, that surface area will be very low. Now, porous has lot of advantages because let me say tell you, the first is the high surface area. This is the major major advantage. Is the so since uh, this uh, you have porous surface, so with that porous surface that you know that we have lot. As compared to smooth surface, the, so obviously that uh, this porous surface has lot of area. So more enzyme, uh, more if you have more uh, surface area, more enzyme will be immobilized on the surface. The internal surface bonding protect the enzyme. Now suppose this is the, this is the, your uh, this is the, this is how your solid matrix. Now if your enzymes are here, it gives some kind of protection because it, it is embedded or uh, when you talk about the suppose uh, encapsulated the enzyme. So, it has a, it has a, an enclave you know that can protect the enzyme. The internal surface bonding protect the enzyme from the turbulence or external environment and a charged surface opposite that of the surface may, may enhance the surface uh, uh, enzyme substrate inter body attracting the substrate. Suppose the here we have if we have the positive charge and your 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 substrate has a negative charge, obviously the interaction between the enzymes uh, if, uh, enzymes uh, interaction with the with the substrate with the enzymes will be more because your your matrix charge is opposite to that of the substrate. And last uh, large enzymes or cell loading possibility since pore size is more. So, it is obvious that you know loading also will be more. Now, there is a lot of disadvantage also there, large enzyme and substrate molecules cannot be penetrated uh, in the smaller pore, but there is a rule of thumb I can tell you that I shall show you at the end. There is an enzyme called catalyst enzyme. What is the, what is the function of the catalyst enzyme? It degrades the hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen, am I right? And this is largely present in the aerobes, because aerobic organisms. Now, in case of anaerobic organism, particularly faculty that is obligatory in anaerobe, they do not have uh, this catalyst enzyme. And since they do not have this catalyst enzyme, so when oxygen they goes to the uh, their system, it produces hydrogen peroxide or superoxide. And this superoxide has oxidizing property. So, since they have oxidizing property, they will change the characteristics of the biomolecules. And if they change the characteristics of the biomolecule, then the activity of the enzyme or activity of the cells or the enzyme will be will be lost. 
So this is the major uh, problem that we have with this uh, this uh, mm, uh, this uh, this sports. So so large molecules cannot penetrate the so so what uh, what problem we have is let me tell you that uh, when when we, when we, the rule of the thumb is that the size of the pore should be double the size of the enzyme. Suppose the size of the enzyme is 84 angstrom unit. So it should be 2 into 84 angstrom unit. That is 168 angstrom unit should be the pore size. But in case of catalyst, jo, though it is round about uh, this 84 uh, angstrom, but we find that uh, if you if you plot like this the activity of the enzymes with the, with this, we'll find we keep on increasing with the pore size, and this pore size is something similar to 364 or something like this. Now question comes why? Because it required some uh, the, the, the the no. So I, I hope I have I I, I told a little bit different that uh, this uh, this is I am talking about the glucose oxidase sorry the glucose oxidase enzyme now in case of glucose oxidase enzyme when it acts on glucose it produces hydrogen peroxide and this hydrogen peroxide is should be degraded by the catalyst enzyme now hydrogen peroxide has the pore size 84 angstrom unit so so when we when we when we plot the activity of the of uh, the of uh, glucose oxidase, we find it is uh, keep on increasing. But maybe at 384 or 87 the angstrom, we get the uh, your your we get the maximum activity. But the reason is that that uh, this high catalyst has the size um, uh, the much higher than this, and we find that this size is uh, related to the size of the catalyst enzyme. So, um, so you know, large molecules or substrate cannot penetrate. This is the major problem that we use the pore as solid matrix. Now, if the pore has same charge as substrate, then also interaction will be less. Pore broad pore, if your pore size is more, then also this is undesirable. That uh, there is every possibility that their uh, enzyme substrate interaction will be very less. Entrap or encapsulation are severely limited by the diffusional effect. So this is the this is the diffusional effect means if if a pore is there then substrate has to enter into the pore so that naturally your diffusional problem in the, in this case will be very uh, stringent. The microbial resistance property that is very important that is uh, if you look at uh, the carriers which are rich in carbon um, such as starch or rich in carbon nitrogen such as protein are good nutrient to the microbes. Now, if if these molecules are present as a solid matrix, then there is the every possibility that your microorganism can grow and spoil the solid matrix. If the carrier is attached with the microbes, the enzyme then released into the solution. Now, inorganic oxide like silica, alumina are resistance to the microbial attack. Organic, organic material such as fluorocarbons, poly uh, propylene, etc., are resistance to the microbial. So, microbial resistance property of the solid matrix that is also plays very important role when we to, we select this uh, what should be the solid matrix we should use. Now, what the question comes? What should be the characteristic desirable characteristics of the solid matrix? First, it should be that you know chemical durability. What do you mean by that? That you know that suppose you want to carry out a reaction A to B. So B is a new product. A is a chemical product. Now it should withstand both the A and B. Otherwise, uh, if they if uh, if uh, it degraded, then that is undesirable. Then high available surface. I already discussed just now. More surface area, more there will be enzyme that will entrap. And if more enzyme is there, more it will interact with the substrate and give the product. Mechanical strength and dimensional stability. This is very important because, as you know, that uh, when when suppose if there is a solution, and uh, when you do the immobilization, that what do you do that in the solid matrix your enzymes are immobilized. Now, what is the characteristics of the solid matrix? They will settle down. Am I right? So you, if you want to have more interaction with the substrate, you should have mechanical starter. 
and if there is a mechanical stirrer, so your solid matrix to should withstand this mechanical force, mechanical strength and dimensional stability. Then microbial resistance, this is obviously to avoid the destruction both the enzyme and carrier and surface and pore charge with respect to the surface. You know, we pore charge should be, if preferably it should be opposite the, to the uh, of, of, uh, substrate so that more enzyme substrate interaction take place. Thermostability, particularly we, we talk about the alpha amylase enzyme that usually act at the high temperature as high as 60 degrees centigrade. So, if we, if we select any kind of solid matrix for alpha amylase enzyme, it should withstand that high temperature. The carrier shape and particle size that plays very important. Uh, we know that spherical size they say it has more surface area as compared to other other uh, solid material. Now, regeneration of the carrier that plays very important role. Suppose we we want to use any kind of uh, uh, solid matrix, um, maybe it is very cheap, but we, we might be using for single time. But so you yeah, again. Uh, when you uh, that uh, that uh, so and but uh, some of the solid matrix uh, I can give the example of uh, platinum foil that is very expensive platinum is costly and then gold but platinum foil you can reuse again and again then you know for longer period of time after after when your enzymes are inactivated you take it out and put it in at 600 degrees centigrade for uh, for two three minutes all the organic material will burn out. Again, you can use uh, it is for immobilization purpose. So, regeneration of the so that solid matrix, uh, though the initial investment is very high, but you can reuse again and again. So, regeneration also plays very important role. Now, carrier regeneration, what I was talking about, this is life cycle of the solid matrix is very important that uh, how long you are going to use. The organic material causes the disposal problem that is very important, but inorganic carrier uh, can be regenerated and, 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 and relatively simple pyrolysis, we can regenerate by with the help of simple pyrolysis process. I was talking, talking about the by simple heating we can, we can, we can do that. Now, this is the, uh, this is the property suggested carrier applications that uh, silla stick, this is silicon rubber and nylon uh, methylrylite that is the medicinal uh, interface with the blood and tissues uh, do not initiate the clotting reaction, little or no immune response evoke. The collagen, this is another, uh, the cellulose acetate that is used, this is for polymer hydrolysis collection of product free substrate. Then control uh, pore glass uh, that is your continuous plug flow at pH below 7, dimensional stability, low pressure drop and, and duration uh, durable uh, between below uh, pH 7. Control pore alumina, continuous plug flow reactor 5 to 11, dimension stability, low pressure drop and du durable about pH, about pH 5. Control pore titan, titania, this is continuous plug flow reactor. So, these are the different uh, properties of some carriers that has been reported. Now, optimizing the carrier that is the pore diameter as I pointed out that uh, important consideration major axis of the enzyme, the unit cell uh, should be greater than the major dimension of the substrate, then the pore uh, diameter carrier should be chosen with respect to enzyme that I have I, I was uh, giving the example of glucose oxidase that um, glucose oxidase enzyme so uh, the uh, so in this uh, in this uh, following example that we we can find out that here here we have the this is the glucose oxidase uh, enzyme activity and uh, this is exactly what I am saying that uh, this is around uh, 384 or something like the angstrom unit and uh, if you look at the size of this is 84 angstrom. So, so this should be into by 2, it should be 168, one am I right angstrom, but it is uh, about 384. So, this is, uh, this is uh, due to the reason is that 
that uh, glucose oxidase will cannot work without the presence of catalyst enzyme. Because why the without the catalyst enzyme it cannot work? The, because catalyst enzyme, the, the, the one of the product with the glucose oxidase is the hydrogen peroxide. And catalyst enzyme, catalyst enzyme that uh, degrade the uh, degrade the hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. So that is why the otherwise, if you don't use the catalyst with the glucose oxidase, then the accumulation of hydrogen peroxide will take place, and uh, and uh, your activity of the enzyme will be lost. Uh, so <clears throat> that is why we find in case of glucose oxidase enzyme about 384 or 380 angstrom will be most suitable for the immobilization of the enzymes. So. <clears throat> So, in conclusion, what I want to tell that immobilization is a is a very important technique through which we can use uh, we can make proper use of the enzyme uh, because it has uh, it has several advantages. It has some disadvantages also. The major advantages is that you can reuse the, the enzyme again and again for longer period of time. Your product is free from enzyme, so your purification problem will be little bit easier, your disposal problem also very less. Uh, but the uh, problem is that when you immobilize, that means you are fixing the cell on the solid matrix, that diffusion problem is the major problem. Then a uh, question is the solid matrix, because uh, by, 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 as soon as you immobilize that you uh, suppose your enzyme is uh, uh, soluble, but as soon as you immobilize that uh, it will become insoluble. So, you are switching over from a homogeneous system to the heterogeneous system. And heterogeneous system major problem we have we told you that is the diffusion problem. The diffusion problem we have to take into account and uh, uh, and characteristics of uh, solid matrix I try to discuss the um, uh, characteristic of the solid matrix is that it should withstand the um, uh, chemically stable, it should withstand the it should have good uh, mechanical power and uh, regeneration characteristics and uh, surface area should be as high as possible. So, you know, the different characteristics we have and we have seen that solid that uh, solid matrix may be of two types, one is pore and there are non-porous. So, in porous uh, um, we have a porous solid matrix having a greater surface area. So, there is a possibility of more immobilized enzymes. So, if more enzymes are immobilized, more will be the rate of reaction. So, that is desirable. So, uh, that is all for uh, today that uh, next class I shall, I shall give some more information on the immobilized engine. Thank you.